Hi, welcome back. My name is Llewellyn, and I was reading yesterday from the domestic violence that June Hunt had wrote, and so let me continue where I was. So yesterday I left off with the question, would God condone my mate abusing me in order to punish me for my sins? The answer is no. Many instances in scripture show where God used one nation to bring judgment on another nation. However, there is no instance where God said, or excuse me, where God used the violence of one mate to punish the other mate. God hates sin and abuse is sin. The truth is an abusive mate is abusive simply as a re result of choosing wrong over right. While you may be the recipient of abuse, you are not the reason for that abuse. Let me repeat that. You are not the reason for the abuse. Your mate's violence exposes his sinfulness, not your sinfulness. Let me say that again. Your mate's violence exposes his sinfulness, not your sinfulness. God's instruction for all of us is to, in Jeremiah 22, 3, he says, do what is just and right. Do no wrong or violence. So do you know what the different types of abuse are? Do you think you can always identify abuse when it's happening? The truth is probably not. And I'm an abuse victim, so there's times that even I think that it's wrong or that it's right or it's acceptable, I guess is the word. Abusive behavior can be aggressive or passive, physical or psychological, direct or indirect. Regardless of the method, all abusive behavior comes from those with hardened hearts who want to punish, coerce, or control. And or control, I should say. Sometimes it's both or all three. Although abusers treat their mates unjustly, they blame their mates for their abusive actions. You made me do it. If it weren't for you, I would never have done it. It is never the abusive man's fault or so he hurtfully says. And you know, that happened with me with my ex. He would always, always blame me for him hitting me and hitting me and hitting me. It was always my fault. Oh, and it was my fault that he cheated on me too, by the way. It was my fault that he drank too. Not, just saying. So after the pile up of put downs, harsh beatings, and even sadistic sexual acts, women can tragically start to believe he's probably right. I know I'm guilty of that. I, I, you know, he's probably right. He was older than me. He was six years older. So he should have known better, right? Not always, people. Not always. It really is all my fault. But God knows the abusive man is entirely wrong. And he knows precisely what is in the abuser's heart. Along with deception resides another evil, which is injustice. So Psalm 58, 2 says, In your heart you devise injustice and your hands met out violence on the earth. Verbal abuse. Verbal abuse is the use of words or tone of voice in an attempt to control, hurt another person or to destroy that person's self-worth. Like physical abuse, um, verbal abuse is devastating within a relationship. A destroyer of respect trust, and intimacy. So these are some of the verbal abusive language that's characterized by, you ready? It's a long list. Badgering with excessive questioning or accusations. Belittling by mocking or name calling. Blaming you for the abuse. Confusing with mind games or twisting what is said. Controlling with criticism or sarcasm. Degrading with public or private put downs demoralizing by making light of the abusive behavior, devaluing by demeaning family or friends, disempowering by continually dictating orders, disrespecting by denying that the abuse ever happened, insulting with coarse language or profanity. It's always fun, isn't it? Intimidating with yelling or threats, manipulating with threats of self-injury or suicide. You know, mine did that. He threatened to kill himself in the beginning. In the beginning, I was like, no, don't do it. But after a while, I was like, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Kill yourself. Then he changed to kill my kids. So it was hard for me. 
Anyways, the list goes on. It says overpowering by always claiming to be right. Paralyzing by threatening to report you as an unfit parent. Shaming with humiliation or guilt trips. Silencing with constant interruptions or by changing topics. <sighs> Telling half-truths or lies. The internal negative impact of verbal abuse can last much longer than the external negative impact of physical violence, which is so true. I don't know about you, but I was listening to someone on a YouTube, and I can't remember who she was, but she said ants. And I like that because it's the automated negative thought syndrome that runs through your head and is telling you that you're stupid or you're wrong or you're not worthy or you're too fat or you're too thin or whatever the negative is. They're lies. Don't listen to them, please. So it says name calling, derogatory comments, persistent shaming, ridicule, and threats are devastating and highly destructive, making the victim, whether man or woman, even more vulnerable to being controlled by the abuser. In Psalm 10:7, the psalmist says of the verbal abuser, his mouth is full of curses and lies and threats. Trouble and evil are under his tongue. Ain't that the truth? Then we go into emotional abuse. <clears throat> While all forms of mistreatment are emotionally abusive, certain overt behaviors can be labeled as emotional abuse. All acts of emotional abuse will fit into one or two categories, passive or aggressive. Are you ready for this list, folks? All right. So here we go for passive. Avoiding the giving of deserved compliments to you. Brooding and sulking when around you. Changing your passwords linked to financial accounts. Denying your request to leave when you ask. Displaying continual irritability around you. Disrespecting your rights, opinions, or feelings. Feeling to return to your home at a reasonable time. Forbidding access to your money, checkbook, and or credit cards. Holding back appropriate attention from you. Keeping you from getting help to overcome an addiction. Manipulating your children. Monitoring all your computer usage. Neglecting your important family gatherings. Refusing to express true feelings with you. Rejecting your need for emotional support. Resisting helping you with the children. Stopping important information from getting to you. Being unwilling to take a fair share of responsibility with you. Using the silent treatment against you. Withholding a listening ear from you or response requested by you. Let's go to aggressive emotional abuse. This is characterized by blocking the doorway when you are arguing, breaking promises to you or not keeping agreements, checking up on you continually, damaging your treasured items. Oh, yeah. Demanding that you behave adoringly in public after abusing you. Great. Driving recklessly to instill fear in you. Expressing excessive anger toward you, forbidding you from seeking necessary treatment, harassing you with unwanted phone calls, hiding your car keys as a means of control, interfering with your work, interrupting your sleep, intimidating you with threatening gestures or body language, isolating you from family and friends, making unwanted visits to you, manipulating your decision making, monitoring all of your phone calls, Prohibiting your participation in major decisions, stalking you, suspecting your activities with excessive jealousy, and threatening you with weapons. Psalm 10 2 says, In his arrogance, the wicked man hunts down the weak who are caught in the schemes he devises. I like that. Physical abuse or violence. Physical abuse involves a person's use of physical size, strength, presence, or position to control or hurt someone else. After beginning with verbal threats of physical harm, you'll wish you had never been born. The verbal abuse escalates to physical abuse. The threats become reality. The first act of violence makes it easier for the abuser to be violent again if there are no immediate repercussions. Once the taboo is broken, never hit a woman Minor attacks can escalate into major assaults. And I found this to be true because when my ex and I got married, I was five months pregnant with our firstborn. And he never hit me before that. He never did. He controlled me by means of manipulation, threats, 
you know, things like that. But never once did he hit me. Just after we got married, and I mean just after, I was like six or seven months pregnant, he pushed me to get away from him. He never really hit me, but he pushed me. I fell down a flight of stairs at seven months pregnant. And you know what I said? It wasn't his fault. I did. He had me so, lack of a better word, brainwashed that it was my fault that I said, you know, he didn't really mean it. it wasn't his fault. Oh, my stars. And I was only 18. I was so young, so naive, which is why I am starting. I have already opened up a nonprofit organization called Safe Life, which is S-A-A-F-E Life. And that stands for Survivors Against Abuse for Everyone's Life. Because I want to help people like you and me. I want to make sure that they don't do what I did. And they actually do get some help. Because it took me too long to get the help. And I don't want you to have to go through that. So continuing on. So this is acts of violence, right? There's pushing and shoving, hitting walls, slapping, striking, shaking severely, kicking or stomping, slamming doors, grabbing or choking. I've had that done. Throwing objects, burning or scalding, breaking teeth. Thank God, no. Binding, chaining, breaking items, scratching, pinching, breaking bones, poking, piercing, destroying property, confining or locking up, threatening injury or death, biting, spitting, harming pets, pinning down, killing pets, punching, kidnapping children, pulling hair, harming children, twisting arms, killing children, and using weapons. And the Bible warns us, uh, Gets being around those who are violent. It says in Proverbs 24, verses 1 and 2, Do not envy wicked men. Do not desire their company, for their hearts plot violence and their lips talk about making trouble. Which is true. <sighs> Sexual abuse or violence. Because many men believe that their wives are to be submissive to all their desires, many women experience sexual abuse, some even without realizing it. So this includes sexually degrading attitudes and treatment, discrimination based on gender, withholding sexual, withholding sexual intimacy and romance, unjust accusations of extramarital affairs, brazen flirtation with members of the opposite sex, Misuse of scripture to justify sex on demand, threats of forced sex, threats of going elsewhere for sexual gratification, adultery, obscene gestures, forced sex, which is also considered mate rape, sodomy, forced oral, oral or anal sex, homosexual acts, rejecting sexual fidelity with wife, forced involvement in perverse sexual acts, using objects on sexual parts, forced exposure to pornography, coerced sexual acts with others. The writer of Hebrew, Hebrews clarifies God's position on the sexual relationship in marriage. Hebrews 13, 4 says, Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure, for God will judge the adulterer and the sexuality and the sexually immoral. Wow. I'm going to read this last part here, and I'll end it with this. And then we'll do more maybe tomorrow. So forced marital sex question. Is it ever right for a husband to demand sex from or force sex on his wife? The answer is no. God's purpose for sex in marriage is for procreation and for pleasure. Sex within marriage is designed to establish a bond, not a barrier. Forced sex is rape. Forced sex produces fear that also prevents intimacy. Forced sex is lust, not love. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 5 says, Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want it. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't force itself on others. Isn't always me first. So I'm going to stop there for right now. And you know, everyone has a story. And if you want to share your story, you can do it here. You can also find me on Facebook, which let me see if I can. Can I copy that? I can. Where did I go? Here I am. In here. So 
find me on Facebook. That is my Safe Life group. And I'm going to also type in again what Safe Life is. There's everyone's life. If you'd like to hear more, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. Remember that my name is Llewellyn. I am also a former abuse victim. I am now a thriving survivor, and I am here to lend a helping hand because I now have a nonprofit organization called Safe Life. I just started that this month. I am getting ready to get that up and going so I can educate not only the victims, but also the community on how abuse affects everyone, not just you. I thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a blessed night. Remember that God does love you. And so do I. Have a good night.